Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the fifth and final part of our Gutenberg series, Keeping Up with Gutenberg, live from WordCamp Europe in Serbia today. Your experts are David Needham, developer advocate here at Pantheon, along with Birgit Polyhack, editor at Gutenberg Times. Just a few quick housekeeping items to go over before we get started. Please make sure you submit any questions you have during the presentation in the question window. We wanna answer as many of those questions during the presentation as possible, so keep them coming. All right, I'd now like to turn it over to David and Brigitte. Thank you very much, Ashley. We're very happy to be here, and I'm, I'm very proud and excited to run through the webinar today with Birgit. Welcome. Or Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we are calling in uh, live from uh, Belgrade, Serbia for WordCamp EU. Um, and so this is a very special webinar, um, and I'm, I'm excited to, to jump in. Yeah, me too. And um, it's actually um, 7 o'clock at night in Belgrade. So um, what's the Dobro? Oh, I forgot it. I thought I, I knew it, but um, uh, what uh, means uh, good evening. So uh, my name is Birgit Pauli Haag, and I'm uh, the editor of Gutenberg Times, uh, but that's such a young um, um, uh, project. I also do a technology strategy for NP Tech Projects, which is a nonprofit for helping nonprofits working with um, WordPress as well as um, other um, technology hurdles. And also there's some <coughs> uh, digital literacy for uh, nonprofit leadership. Hey, Ashley, it looks like we might be having a little bit of bandwidth problem. Can you just confirm that you can still hear us okay? Yeah, you guys sound great. Um, if, anyone okay. has any yeah. if anyone has any trouble hearing or um, any connection issues, let us know in the question window and we'll pause and, and try and figure it out. Okay. But I think we're good to go. Okay. okay. Excellent. So this is the part five of um, the Pantheon uh, Gutenberg webinars, and there were four... Um, previous ones, and you probably want to um, go back once they are live um, again for uh, review um, the recorded sessions and um, look at um, Joe Casabonos' Introduction to Gutenberg. Um, Mel Joyce did a uh, wonderful one on designing Gutenberg and talks about all the design um, <clears throat> um, challenges and um, reviewing things, um, how they are and how to make it better. Um, Josh Pollard talked about extending Gutenberg and then um, Daniel Bachhuber um, on how to get your site ready for Gutenberg um, today. Yeah. And, and, well, and these are all very excellent sessions. And I, I, if, yes. you, if you missed any of them, I, I highly recommend going back and watching them. Um, I believe if you are registered for them, you should be able to, to go and watch them. Uh, if you're viewing this after the fact and maybe you, you didn't register for them, it's okay. Uh, all of them will be released next week, and there should be more information uh, probably at the end of this presentation on, on how to actually connect and, and get those recordings. And so, yeah, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, keeping up with Gutenberg. And so, um, what, can you can you explain a little bit about how did we come up with this title? You know, like, what does it mean exactly to keep up with Gutenberg? Well, Gutenberg is um, still in development. It hasn't been released yet for um, in the uh, WordPress core, and it's still in very much in flux. So staying up or keeping up with uh, Gutenberg is um, important, definitely for plugin developers and theme developers. It's also important for those consultants who uh, work with clients on their sites to find out um, are there any hiccups that they might occur uh, when they when Gutenberg comes um, into core or um, just added as a plugin to the site. Um, yeah, and, and maybe not to get you know cart before the horse, but <laughs> how, how, what what exactly is Gutenberg for those of the the people watching who maybe haven't uh, heard of Gutenberg before? So uh, Gutenberg is actually the new visual editor for WordPress in its first iteration. Um, so everything that is now in um, uh, different ways how to can add you can add a content to the website. 
um, is either through the editor, what you see is what you get at the term, but never is what you see is what you get. Um, but it also combines the shortcuts, the widgets, um, yeah, that you, uh, or custom post types and, and templates that you now need to know more about as a content creator, um, all in one interface that, um, and everything is going to be a block. So it's going to be an image block, it's going to be a form block, it's going to be a button block, <clears throat> a paragraph block, and all the things that you now use um, to put content in, um, you can still do, but you can do so much more as a content creator. Um, in the second iteration, Gutenberg will also um, tie into the customizer, the WordPress customizer, um, and also help with assembling um, not only uh, single posts and pages, but also um, have uh, Gutenberg blocks in footers and sidebars and even headers. Um, but that is uh, still way out. Uh, right now we are waiting for Gutenberg, the editor, to be in WordPress core. Um, right now you can um, test and use Gutenberg as a feature plugin. You can go to the um, WordPress plugin repository, search for Gutenberg, and then download it to your website. And um, then you will have um, two ways to edit your content. You can but, use your- but, but, but before you do that, don't do this on your live site. Ha! Yeah, this Good is still point. an experimental plugin, still in active development. Yes. Uh, don't just go and put it up on some live environment just yet. Definitely, definitely create a development environment. Create a local version of your site. Uh, Pantheon is a great place to spin up a uh, environment for free. Uh, we don't charge anything for development sites uh, unless you actually go live with the website. So it's a great place just to migrate a site over, uh, enable the plugin, see what it actually looks like, uh, and then see, you know, play around with it and see what you can do with it. And you actually don't have to be a um, um, site administrator or know anything about server administration to spin up that staging site with Pantheon. Um, because Pantheon provides you a little plugin that you can, yeah, in uh, install on your current site. It grabs all the um, assets from your site, uh, the database, and then you can import it into the Pantheon environment. It's actually fairly um, easy to do. I say easy, but I'm not a system administrator, so if I can do it, um, any site administrator probably would be able to do it. That, that's actually a great segue. Um, so. What would you say is your, your history with WordPress? Like how did you get started? Um, I'm a web developer since 1996, and I've been doing what you see is what I get, editing by hand coding everything. Um, but I also started to get into um, 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 custom coding um, uh, server-side uh, scripts and these kind of things. And then when I we migrated into uh, the United States and 20 years ago, I um, also volunteered for a um, local Freenet who did websites for nonprofits. And by that time, um, so it's been up uh, maybe um, ten, uh, nine years forward uh, in 2009, that uh, support for nonprofits has gotten hideously outdated. It was um, um, only available through Internet Explorer. It didn't have a whole lot of uh, modern um, editing features, so a lot of nonprofits kind of went away and did something else. But we still wanted to help those 40 nonprofits that were still with the local Naples Freenet. Um, and I looked at about 10 customer content management systems, among them um, WordPress. And I found that not only for the users, WordPress was really easy to use and um, uh, publish content. It was also good for our support stuff. We were all volunteers and we didn't have a whole lot of technology um, volunteers. So um, having support uh, through WordPress and being able to Google, being maybe 10 minutes ahead of people that have questions by Googling things is actually a very attractive support uh, uh, um, uh, 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 an attractive way to do support for WordPress. So we uh, migrated um, the 40 nonprofits uh, throughout the summer, and we found that um, the techies went away, and in came the um, newsletter editors, 
uh, the membership chairs and the presidents that actually wanted to use content on the website to communicate with the members. So it was actually the right way to, and which told me, okay, we're on the right way, a right track there. Um, yeah, that's my introduction to WordPress. And after 2010, we also migrated our uh, companies, um, clients um, to WordPress. Um, and um, have done it ever since. So something that you mentioned there I, 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 that kind of stood out to me was, uh, you know, the website that was built was really perfect for the non-techie, the, the content creator and editor. And it kind of resonated with me. That, that's something I keep hearing about Gutenberg as being yes. a selling point, that it's really intended for that audience, that it's, it's all about making that really smooth and intuitive for yeah. creating pages. Yeah, and I have been using Gutenberg now since I started uh, Gutenberg Times in January um, on a live site actually, but don't do it at home. Um, and I have been, it has been a great joy of creating content with Gutenberg. Um, it's still rough uh, around the edges and there is a lot of work um, going on and we'll talk about them um, yeah, further <laughs> in this webinar, right? Yeah. But that's, yeah, it's uh, your content creators um, will definitely like it because it's so smooth and um, it's a joy to work with. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so you, you mentioned the Gutenberg Times, and I know Ashley mentioned at the very beginning that you're the, the editor of the Gutenberg Times. Um, I, I'd love to hear a little bit about what the Gutenberg Times is and maybe how it came to be. Well, um, well, I was uh, like an open source manner, manner. I was scratching a personal itch. Um, pretty much exactly a year ago, I saw a, a video on demo video on Gutenberg Times at uh, on Gutenberg at the WordCamp Europe in Paris, and I was really blown away by the um, idea and how it's uh, implemented. And I wanted to learn everything and. Um, anything about it. So I collected blog posts, I um, uh, looked at Twitter, I connected with the Gutenberg uh, development team, I looked at GitHub and all the issues that were there. Of course I tried it out. Back then it was in the um, I think 0 0.3 version or 0 0.1 um, came out um, during or just about at um, WordCamp Europe. And um, my excitement um, was really um, very, I, I was very happy about it, yeah. And so I wanted to collect everything. And what I found was there are quite a few negative voices out there, um, especially at the beginning. And um, even more, I wanted to um, collect all the positive voices as well to have kind of a counterweight for that. And I also wanted to give um, community members, being it developers, being it um, explorers of Gutenberg and um, uh, uh, the nuanced uh, voices a little bit more platform. Um, I did it at the beginning on Storyfy and Storyfy has reached its end of life last month and it's another lesson in uh, don't build um, something that needs to stay, be permanent on rented land because somebody's going to take it away and you're out of control. So um, I, yeah, after WordCamp US, so I started to thinking about, okay, well, I guess I need to put it up on a website and came up with the domain name and the website, uh, Gutenberg Times. And we've done about 70 um, bi-weekly updates where we do roundup posts with uh, tweets and blog posts and yeah. Um, we also share photos from around the world uh, of meetups and word camps where Gutenberg uh, makes an entrance. Hmm. So that's um, it's been a, a great joy, and thank you for Pantheon has uh, has been uh, Pantheon has been a, a sponsor and partner to um, Gutenberg Times for the last three months, and it was um, thank you very much for that. Yeah, so it, it sounds like um, the the Gutenberg Times is a a project that you're very passionate about because as you said there is sort of a missing uh, collection of, of positive and um, really conversations about what is happening in Gutenberg and so is it, is it accurate to say like you kind of pulled them all together uh, talked about it kind of interpreted what you're seeing happening and that's that that's sort of what's been driving it yeah that's pretty much it um, right now information about Gutenberg is relatively fragmented, although if you want to get to the nitty-gritty of it, go to the GitHub 
repository of the uh, projects um, right now. Actually, I'd love to for you yeah. to keep going a little bit more about that. Like, uh, you know, GitHub, like, it, it's uh, not something I would assume that you would go to GitHub to work on WordPress uh, right. or stuff. Uh, I, I would think you would go to just WordPress. To, to do that. WordPress yeah, yeah. yeah, and um, certainly you can do, um, I think um, Gutenberg uh, development team decided to do it at GitHub because it has uh, it needs input from developers and contributors and it's easier for some of the, it uses, uh, Gutenberg also uses React, um, which is a JavaScript framework and um, most of the younger developers who already are knowledgeable about it are actually working with GitHub more than um, anything else and it's a it's a feature plugin so it's also not yet available through or managed through the WordPress trunk where everything else on core is managed hmm. um, so um, they um, so on WordPress.org you find the support forum of Gutenberg um, when if you have um, uh, trouble using it and need support from um, the volunteers that are um, around the support forum, and <clears throat> but if you are, want to um, record some issues, that definitely should be on uh, GitHub um, because that's where everything is kind of kept together. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's that's really helpful to know. Um, and it didn't. I mean, did did it start out in GitHub when it went? Like, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they started out in GitHub. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, how how have you seen the Gutenberg project sort of evolve and change over time since you first started, you know, since Paris, when you were inspired and, and saw it? Oh my God, there has been so much work uh, done um, from a very um, yeah, basic, okay, this is a paragraph and here you can do, do headings. Um, there are also uh, in, in learning how to do the, the inserter, uh, how you can access blocks that has evolved quite um, uh, tremendously because uh, at first you only have by six blocks and all of a sudden you have 60 blocks. The interface definitely needs to change for that. And then um, there is an, um, a hashtag out there <laughs> that I kind of took from Matt Mollenweg from the State of the Union called um, hash 280 blocks. Um, so what happens if a user has to manage 280 blocks? Um, it's um, now that we talk about blocks, it actually comes up, but um, in previously users and content creators had to remember short codes um, and even yeah, in the same amount. Um, and so it's, it's, uh, it has, instead of having a, a tab up there, there's a, an accordion now that you can view. Um, um, and uh, yeah, the, the block, block API has changed, I think, two or three times. The plugin API came in for um, uh, in mostly in 3.0, where you can, where plugin developers can also change the sidebar um, for a particular information on the blocks. Mm -hmm. So it has quite evolved um, in lots of different ways. And I know that the design team around Joan. Um, Asmussen, and I might butcher his name, I'm sorry about that, <laughs> and Tammy Lissa, um, that they did different iterations and, sign, and find out what the community think of it. Think of Gutenberg as being an um, innovation of uh, the next generation that takes um, uh, editing. What you see is what you get bringing really to um, WordPress and be the foundation for the next 10 years on WordPress. Yeah, so. Right. Um, there are quite a few things that um, uh, hadn't worked out the way it was envisioned, but uh, it's a lot of iteration coming by. Yeah, so it has come, has now had its 30th updates with 3.0. So it was quite mm -hmm. um, a lot of work to be done. Yeah. And so with with all of these changes happening, and mm -hmm. and frequently, you know, all the time things are things are improving and changing, and uh, people are having conversations. How how do you Take all of that information, spread all over the internet, uh, and sort of aggregate it into what you have, you have a, a blog. Um, you also have a, a pretty active Twitter Twitter stream. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you get all that together? Um, I use a tool um, that's called Brand24.com, and um, you can give it a keyword um, like Gutenberg, 
and then it collects uh, within the next um, few days everything that is published um, with that keyword. So it goes out to YouTube, it goes to um, the blogosphere, the Twitterverse, the uh, Facebook, um, Pinterest, no, yeah, Instagram. Um, so I'll see, and, and um, a lot of blog um, authors actually do not um, promote their content through Twitter. So it's very hard to find them unless you you have a tool like that. It's uh, brand24.com. And I go through it. It has probably a good work is not, that's one thing, <laughs> it's not uh, exclusive to WordPress. There are other things that are named Gutenberg, and there are people named Gutenberg, um, except uh, from Johannes um, Gutenberg, who uh, did the printing press. But um, so, uh, but uh, reading through that is very fast, and, and uh, yeah, that tool helped me quite a bit. I also look at some of the my RSS feed um, reader looks at some of the blog posts um, from um, from Automatic on the design blog and um, also from some of the developers of Gutenberg have their own blogs where they um, kind of elaborate on some of the um, concepts mm. and what's new in Gutenberg. So that's very interesting too. There's, so I can, um, yeah. There, there's some sort of a, uh, a Slack meeting also, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern, um, I forgot the, uh, the UTC one, but it's 9 a.m. Eastern. The core editing team has a chat on Slack. Um, I don't think it's in there. Yeah. Hmm. Oops. There it is. There right. we go. There we go. Yeah. So that's certainly um, that's what's in the moment. So through the um, Slack chat, I I learn. Um, what the development team is working on in terms of the next release, uh, what's coming down the pipe, and um, also if there are some discussions going on, right? Um, and last week there was a discussion about the inserter between, so it's uh, still all inside baseball, but it's about the inserter um, between blocks, yeah, how mm -hmm. to, to manage that interface because it, it has very much improved over the last, um, I say, six months. Um, but it's still not uh, where the design team would like to have it. So um, those discussions happen on Slack. Um, also um, pointing to, um, uh, it also has a running tab. Um, so it's connected with the GitHub issues as well as pull requests. So um, if you follow that the, um, Slack channel, you will always kind of see, okay, what's, what are the newest issues that came up? What are the mm. newest pull requests that have been closed? Um, so it's, mm. it's quite an interesting. Did you say that's in the make WordPress it's uh, in, Slack? Or? It's in the WordPress make um, uh, Slack, yes. Okay. Um, and it has its, its own channel. It's not core, it's um, slash, uh, it's um, core dash editors. Okay. Yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. Um, there are also um, two more places where I look for um, yeah how our, because a big uh, question is okay how are plugin authors or companies that have major plugins um, prepare for Gutenberg and um, I also follow the Jetpack milestones for Gutenberg as well as the WooCommerce, and both um, plugins have a GitHub repository where you can um, look this up if you really, um, really need to um, see for your own um, knowledge or for your clients um, what's coming down the pipe. Yeah. And what are some other ways that um, professional developers, agencies, uh, people that are kind of interested in getting into Gutenberg uh, more uh, more heavily. I mean, what are some ways that they can kind of stay on top of the the pulse of what's going on with, with Gutenberg? Yeah, and that's part of the fragmentation. Um, there are a few things. So the biggest concern is for a lot of people is backwards compatibility for plugins. Um, and 
um, Daniel Bakuba, I think, um, I don't know if he talked about it in his um, um, webinar um, a week ago, but he has um, 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 an initiative, it's called Plugin Compatibility, which is a crowdsourced uh, way to do it, to for people to get involved and test it. Um, test plugins, uh, spin up a test environment, um, install Gutenberg automatically, and then have that one uh, plugin to be tested also installed automatically on that um, uh, staging site, and then see does it break or make the plugin. Um, and then uh, the testers can then say, oh, okay, this plugin is um, Gutenberg compatible. It's likely to be Gutenberg compatible. Have a few choices on doesn't touch the editor. Um, everything works, kind of thing. Um, and then so I use that in, but all the other known issues are uh, totally fragmented. And I have a blog post on the um, Gutenberg Times called um, uh, Try or Not to Try, uh, Themes and Plugins and Known Conflicts with uh, Gutenberg. And it um, looks at uh, plugins that have Gutenberg works. So I looked at some of the support forums of plugins mm. because um, Brand24 picks those up. That's pretty cool. Um, when uh, someone in a, a support forum on WordPress.org for a plugin um, asked about Gutenberg um, compatibility. And so that's one thing. The next is the list of Gutenberg compatible plugins. And that's an export um, from the project um, where you can, here's a link on that. Um, and then, oops, sorry. And then also um, an updated list of compatible plugins is, um, I don't have a whole lot of list there yet. Um, but then also what happens with third party page builders is another question. Mm. Um, and these links go to, um, the notification that uh, Divi or Beaver Builder or Site Origin actually um, have an official announcement about Gutenberg, so you can can see that some themes. Um, I have seen conversations online about some themes, and also so right. that's certainly a, a good start to find out. Um, shall you try or not try the Gutenberg. Right, and I, I think I saw uh, also uh, Daniel Bakuber, in addition to the, uh, the the work he did to you know test out a plugin, there's also mm -hmm. the, the migration yes. guide that he, he created to help people who maybe wrote their own plugin figure out how to you know make it compatible. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, certainly um, uh, when as a plugin developer you um, have additional um, interfaces on the um, editor above the editor now above the editor additional buttons or in the editor some buttons S uh, some of it comes over into Gutenberg like the buttons on um, and some of it it does not and um, the migration guide tells you okay if you do did this here you can go over here to do it in Gutenberg and I'm sure I have somewhere a link on it if not I'm gonna add it yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we can definitely yeah. check into that. Right. Make sure that it's, yeah. it's posted there. I might have it here. No, I haven't here either. Yeah. So that's another uh, initiative. Yeah. Um, I think the easiest way to start out with um, getting your feet wet with Gutenberg is. Um, <clears throat> Install it on a, a staging site or just spin up a new virgin WordPress site and um, install it and try to recreate one of the more complicated blog posts that you or pages that you have um, and use the Gutenberg blocks and um, see what works and what doesn't work. Um, and if you have an issue that uh, didn't work, that it doesn't work or doesn't work uh, as well as you wanted it to work, um, file an issue with, uh, on GitHub. That's one thing. Um, and then the next stage would be to, okay, what else can I do with Gutenberg blocks that I couldn't do with the, what you see is what you get editor. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I felt like um, 
So I, I went to WordCamp US and mm -hmm. I felt like um, sitting in the audience watching the live demo of like an actual legitimate live demo of Gutenberg. Um, that was the moment at which it kind of became real for me mm -hmm. or where I realized like, oh, this is, this is going to be really cool. Um, yeah. um, and I felt like I may not have been the only person who had that, that opinion. Did, did you notice anything like oh, before and after? Yeah, I, I definitely know, um, realized that or felt that the, the mood was shifting. Yeah? And there was always this, uh, what other people call FUD, like fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, uh, some even felt despair, um, but it shifted in terms of, um, so Morton Rand Hendrickson did a, um, a, a breakout session uh, in the afternoon, and then Matthias Ventura, the uh, project lead, or one of the project leads for Gutenberg, did a live demo um, at the State of the Word, and that's what you were referring to. Um, and he did even some live programming, I'm, I suspect, and it really shifted. It, um, Matthias was uh, able to show uh, the, the full broad um, application of uh, Gutenberg as well as um, the templating. So you can create templates and block, um, have uh, shared blocks and the blocks to um, combine blocks um, like nested blocks. And he showed all that um, on the live demo. And the questions that came off the state of the word was uh, uh, were very specific on the concerns that people had but also expressed a lot of excitement. Like I was not gonna, uh, yeah, some some of them uh, expressed, um, oh, I wasn't bother, being bothered about Gutenberg because it wasn't released yet, but now I see what it is and I'm very excited about it. So um, it was very interesting to see how that shifted in uh, the WordCamp US. Yeah, so you, you mentioned um, when you first got started, there was sort of a fragmentation of uh, information about WordPress or uh, Gutenberg specifically and uh, often a lot of negativity and I agree it did feel like there was a shift at, at WordCamp US. Um, what are some ways that people who want to give feedback like who, who maybe see things about Gutenberg that are concerning or um, that are plain wrong right now that they want to try to improve or um, give feedback on what's a good avenue for them to communicate that feedback? <clears throat> Um, if you just want to communicate the feedback, I think the easiest way is to write a blog post about your experience. Um, I know that the development team is uh, reading everything that comes down the pipeline that talks about the interface and how it's not working out, how it's not working and what is really working and what excites you. Um, if you want to um, spend a little bit more time and create a GitHub issue that would be particularly helpful, um, there's also the, um, yeah, that's the GitHub issue. And you see there right now, uh, and this is the live, it's not a screenshot, it's a live um, download, there are uh, 720 issues um, open. Uh, some of them are tagged um, for um, already used. Some of them are actually tagged for the uh, contributor day um, uh, on Thursday for getting new people in and um, attacked with bug and need more info. Yeah, um, the, so that's one point of view. If you are a user and don't know developer speak or nerd speak, it's perfectly fine to go to the WordPress.org repository of the um, uh, plugin and uh, do what you do with other plugins as well, um, record an issue. Um, just open a support ticket that helps you through that. Um, uh, so for Gutenberg specifically. Yeah. yeah, for Gutenberg specifically, for the plugin. Um, and we are going there now. Yeah, so there's a support forum um, that is um, staffed by whoever is supporting, uh, doing uh, support forums um, answers as well. Um, but it, uh, it also, so uh, Tammy and Matthias and um, others have done a, a, a very good job in finding a, um, even if people are a little bit aggressive or angry or um, passive aggressive in their, um, what they write about Gutenberg on their opinion of Gutenberg, um, all the developers have always done a, a good 
um, way to keep the dialogue open to really go down to the um, nature of the grievance um, because um, we all know that sometimes um, yeah everybody goes through a, the, the five stages of, of, of grief when there is a change coming down the pipeline that you are not controlling then it comes from the outside so it's i think it starts out with denial and then it's anger and then it's um bargaining and then acceptance and somewhere in between there is depression um and we all go through those stages and you see it um shining through at some of the um, communication uh, that is um in opposition of gutenberg but uh, i think um any um, comment is really accepted and, and welcoming, welcome because it always has a grain of salt, a grain of truth in that that um, can make Gutenberg a better tool for um, millions of people. So don't be shy, um, connect with the team and in any way you, you find appropriate. And um, of course, um, if you are, um, so there's the IRC, <laughs> kind of um, way to be polite, yeah, don't belittle people and yeah, um, but we all know how, how we behave online, yeah. Right, so, right. To be adults. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, I know uh, we mentioned at the beginning we're here in Belgrade for uh, WordCamp EU and there's going to be a lot of Gutenberg activity going on this week, uh, particularly I imagine at, at, at uh, Contributor Day. Um, are, is there anything in particular that you're hoping to kind of get out of, of WordCamp EU this year um, or that you're excited to hear more about? Well, I definitely um, look forward to connecting with um, people on the Gutenberg development team. Um, most of them I haven't met yet because they're all in Europe. So um, uh, many will be here. Um, so I really would like to connect with them. Um, is, is that the group that you're working with on Contributor Day specifically? Or is there... uh, no, on Contributor Day, I'm working with the community team. Um, there were two initiatives that I, um, I, yeah, I, I got my task list a week ago from uh, Francesca and we're working on the goals and accomplishments for 2017 and 18. And I also did a meetup roundtable series, video chat series and we want to, and it was very um, successful, but we want, also want to make sure that it's going to be a, a sustainable um, endeavor. Uh, maybe for the future. I, um, I also, of course, um, look forward to Matt Malamek's uh, Q&A um, and learn um, what he says about Gutenberg one year later. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so what else can people do? Um, if you have, um, so one question I get quite a bit is um, how do I learn React or do any JavaScript and these kind of things. And yes, um, I think you will be. Um, not everything is going to be backwards compatible in life, um, and I think it's the time now to heed Matt Mullenweg's um, um, imperative to study JavaScript deeply. It was in his 2015 State of the Word. And um, if you wanted to start out with that and you haven't done any JavaScript, I'm learning JavaScript now for the third time as a web developer from 1996. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, it's quite a journey. Um, and the, uh, the JavaScript programming language has um, done quite a leap. There are two courses that are very affordable out there. One is Wes Boss um, React for Beginners. Um, he also has a free course, um, JavaScript, 30, where he walks you through 30 JavaScript um, uh, problems and uh, gives you a little um, project to do. Uh, it, I, I've uh, found it very nice um, and very helpful. And then there is uh, Zach Gordon, um, JavaScript for uh, WordPress. Um, he has um, uh, creating Gutenberg WordPress blocks um, course. And he started in January. And he yeah, been, I, I think uh, uh, Joe Casabona mentioned it in the, mm -hmm. in the first yeah. the first webinar yeah. that they're they're working together on a, a course as well. Right, uh, Joe Casabona does a um, a course on for site owners and how to get their website ready. And Zach is for the uh, develop Zach's courses for the developers. And he just 
announced that he has um, upgraded it or re um, have all the, the changes that are between, he, he released the course in January, now it's June, there were quite a few changes in the API, so he mm -hmm. uh, took care of that in his uh, course version 2.5. So, out. so I, I know, um, you know, so, so I know he'd originally started a course uh, with Gutenberg in the title, and mm -hmm. had somewhat yeah. recently taken Gutenberg out of the title because I, I, I've heard that you know in the community, once Gutenberg is in core, it, it, you know, it's not going to be necessarily a, a thing anymore. Do you see any any changes happening to the Gutenberg Times? Well, in, that's in a very of, interesting question, yeah. and I, um, I. Yeah, I had it in my head, but I don't have an answer to that. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that the editor is only part of it, um, of the Gutenberg initiative. Um, the next part is the customizer. So um, Western Rudder and his team on the customizer will work with uh, Gutenberg blocks and how to get it into the site building kind of way. Um, and that is certainly another way um, we will uh, keep up with it. The other part is that um, just because it's released uh, does not mean that people won't have questions or want to learn more about Gutenberg um, and the editor. Um, it's, um, it's going to be quite an interesting journey. How many people will stay on 4.9 uh, is the question. Um, when uh, Gutenberg comes in or the editor uh, will be released in 5.0, um, how many people will install the classic editor um, to have a fallback solution? That's the fallback solution um, from the Gutenberg team when um, uh, quite a few things are not yet compatible and the plugin developers of the plugins that you use haven't come up yet. Um, so, um, yeah, Gutenberg Times is going to stay around a while. Um, there was, um, um, and just because, so, a few companies that do plugin development um, now uh, foresee that they will uh, support the pre-Gutenberg and after-Gutenberg um, uh, release sites uh, for the next two to three years um, to help uh, people with the migration. And um, adopting new um, um, versions of WordPress um, has been kind of uh, not everybody will be on WordPress 5.0. Um, yeah, you probably should wait <laughs> until 5.1 is out or something like that. Um, another, um, the team is still thinking about having a try Gutenberg prompt um, prior to the 5.0 release and the 4.9 dot release. Um, I, it was pushed from 4.9.5 to 4.9.6, but 4.9.6 was all about the GDPR kind of thing. So it probably, it, it could come in 4.9.7 where um, site admins see a prompt, well, this is a new editor, don't you want to try it? And um, so that's going to be, um, a, a get Gutenberg uh, in front of a lot more people as it is now. Yeah, so. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it very much is. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, well, I, I think we're almost out of time for the uh, presentation uh, kind of discussion part. Um, did you have any any final things before you kick it over to Ashley for questions? No, I'm um, uh, curious on what the questions will be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's All do right, that. then, Ashley, we're we're ready for questions. Did we lose Ashley? I hope not. <laughs> well, we're still on. So, um, so what are you going to do on WordCamp Europe? Oh, so I, uh, I'm contributor today. I'm participating on for the, the training team. So mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're trying to build up our team and create curriculum and presentations that people can use and reuse for teaching people how to use WordPress. Okay. Uh, Gutenberg is actually a big initiative that we have there yeah. as well because it's it's a little early, but it's also not so early to start thinking about how how should trainers start teaching people how to use Gutenberg. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious about how that goes because I have tried um, a few times to 
kind of think about it and maybe uh, create an, uh, not a course, but kind of a yeah, little short micro videos on uh, what to, how to do uh, work with Gutenberg blocks. Um, but that's an interesting um, um, way to, well, let's see how that goes. Yeah. So. All right. Well, um, yeah, but in addition to that, we also have, um, uh, I'm giving a talk. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Intro to Drupal for WordPress Looks. Oh, okay. So it's, yeah. it's, it's all about um, kind of introducing some of the really high level basics of, uh, of Drupal, like how I got into it, um, why someone might think about using a Drupal site versus a WordPress site. Uh, but ultimately, it's all about um, kind of showing that our communities are really very similar. Mm -hmm. and that we've uh, sort of played off of each other over the years and you know kind of spurred each other on and so it's it's really all about um bringing our communities together and encouraging collaboration yeah, that's wonderful yeah i uh I have touched Drupal for a long time and um yeah i'm looking forward to that talk um but it's also um kind of uh yeah i just found uh, or uh, and reminded um of an initiative to have the Gutenberg editor actually be a standalone editor um, for other um, content management systems, and if that's a possibility. And I know um, some of the uh, Gutenberg developers are thinking about it. They're not doing anything with it now because they have a different focus, um, but it's certainly something um, to think about uh, when. Um, um, yeah, in terms of Drupal and WordPress kind of uh, synergy. Um, I also want to point out an, a, another um, a resource um, of uh, VIPWordPress.com. They uh, provide actually free Gutenberg how-to videos. And um, if you go to VIPGutenberg.com, you'll see um, that there are some of them are for the VIP People, but if you register, you can have the Gutenberg Enterprise videos. And um, one of them is uh, converting Guten uh, custom content to blocks with a few um, um, iterations like migrating from CB, um, CMB2 to blocks, migrating from ACF to blocks, migrating <coughs> ACF content to Gutenberg, or converting shortcuts to plugin. That's one area, and the other area is um, access controls and user permissions to make sure that um, not all blocks, not everybody can um, access blocks, but also how uh, to create block templates and using them and also controlling access to them. So that's uh, certainly a, a huge resource for um, plugin developers and um, theme developers to um, integrate um, other. Um, current websites to Gutenberg. Cool. All right. Yeah, thank you. And I, I just got worried. I think Ashley should be able to talk now. Yeah, sorry guys. I was having there some technical go. difficulties. <laughs> and, um, okay. We'll go ahead and ask some questions for you guys. Um, so just one simple one. Will Matt's presentation be published this coming Saturday? Will Matt's presentation? So it, there is a live stream, I know. Um, and the state of the word is usually also posted uh, on the website pretty, like, if not live, it, it pretty soon after. Well, so yeah. I, I would expect so. Yeah, it, it's not going to be a state of the word kind of thing. Um, but the live stream, um, so in one of the rooms, uh, the live stream will uh, show Matt Malamek's um, hour. Um, and I know that the team of WordCamp Europe is pretty fast in getting the videos um, up on WordPress TV um, within a week or two, definitely. Great. And you can definitely read about it on Gutenberg Times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so what happens with my content when I enable Gutenberg? Nothing happens with your current content when you enable Gutenberg. So Gutenberg won't touch your current content unless you want it to. So um, that's the short answer. If you, when, when you go to a post or a, a, a page that has previously has um, content in there and you open it with Gutenberg editor, it will all be displayed in the classic editor kind of view. 
Um, so you have a toolbar and you have all kind of from top to bottom. There is a method where you can say, okay, convert everything to blocks, which works fairly well. Uh, and then if it doesn't, make sure that you raise the issue on GitHub or on the support forum. Um, but it uh, translated everything that's in the content. But unless you click that button, um, nothing's going to happen when you use um, enable Gutenberg to, to your content. It's safe. <laughs> Okay, I think we have one more question. Uh, do I need to learn React for Gutenberg blocks? Um, there is a, um, a blog post out there um, that um, actually answers that particular question. So if you type that question into Google, you probably will find it. And uh, there are multiple ways to do Gutenberg blocks without um, React. So, um, and you can uh, register them in PHP and um, make it happen through the Gutenberg editor. Mm -hmm. um, but I would caution you that you won't be able to do all the complex things with um, uh, Gutenberg and blocks uh, without knowing at least a lot of JavaScript. Um, the Gutenberg development team has um, abstracted everything uh, around React into uh, WordPress um, methods and objects, and you can call them via JavaScript. Um, so you don't need necessarily React, but JavaScript is definitely helpful. Yeah, my, my impression is that you, you don't need React to get started. Right. Um, yeah. You can get started pretty easily, but but you do definitely need to know JavaScript, and we'll, yeah. we'll probably get into React down the road the deeper you go. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Definitely. Great. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Thank you, guys, and thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or feedback, please visit our website where you'll find a Contact Us page, and we will also be sending a link next week with all of the recordings for all five. Uh, sessions of Gutenberg. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. It was a great pleasure. Thanks for having us. Bye.